Electricity Minister Dr. Hossein Zuramukhoba says energy security remains an issue in South Africa amid high emission levels from coal-fired power stations and the impact of climate change. He was speaking while delivering the keynote address at the Renewable Energy Seminar in Midrand yesterday. The gathering comes as the country has a renewable energy independent power producer procurement program that has seen uh, bid windows opened for renewable energy. To further understand where we're at insofar as this is concerned, let's bring in Professor Samson Mambwedi. He's the head of uh, Department of Science and Innovations Energy Secretariat uh, with Sanedi and joins us now via our video link. Prof, always great speaking to you. Thanks very much indeed for making time to help us understand these issues. And our conversation this morning comes after reports, I think it was the BBC, that mentioned that the UK has officially parted ways with coal. It feels, dare I say, that there is finally a shift to renewable energy, or am I speaking a bit too early? Um, good morning to you and the viewers. Um, yes, uh, there is a huge shift towards renewable energy, um, both at international level and also uh, locally in South Africa. So the minister and his deputy hosted this uh, renewable energy seminar that's focusing mainly on the renewable energy independent power producers program. The whole idea was basically to relook at what happened in the past so far and also look uh, uh, further ahead to say what is it that South Africa needs to do to correct some of the, 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 the challenges that uh, the program has um, uh, experienced and also to fast track the bringing in of uh, renewable energy through the renewable energy independent power producers program. One of the things that the minister mentioned yesterday was that the government is planning to go on, on, on a huge um, a procurement program uh, in under the Renewable Energy Independent Power Producers Program. So they wanted to basically listen to the people, the industry uh, players, and, and get the, the, the a gist of um, what has worked in the past and what are the challenges. And some of the things that that, that were basically challenges uh, um, were issues around the, the lack of grid capacity, the delays in um, uh, issuing of cost estimate letters around the grid connection, um, issues around environmental impact assessment, uh, and more specifically on the wind side, when you look at uh, the fact that it takes about uh, uh, three to six months and to basically do a, a, a specialist study, for instance, on the beds, uh, on the impact on the bad side of things. Um, however, the government also took uh, some time uh, looking back on the on the program and uh, indicating what are the, the 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 successes and some of the successes obviously are on the on the uh, direct foreign investment 270 something billion rand that has been invested in the sector so far um the, the, there's also the 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 impact on the on the grid um, uh, with renewable energy, the installed capacity just above six gigawatts, assisting us in avoiding load shedding by at least a minimum of two stages um, uh, every day. And, and there's quite a number of, um, and, and local investment, obviously, uh, about 37% uh, of the projects uh, or, the, or the investment owned by South Africans uh, through the, the, the development finance um, institutions such as your, your DBSA and your IDC and things like that. So I would say that uh, the future looks bright for, for renewable energy in, in the country. And obviously we're responding as, uh, you know, to the, to the nationally determined um, uh, contributions by government as well. Sure. Yeah, there's quite a few things to be considered there, Prof, but I'm hoping to hone in on one of them. And that's around um, IPP struggling to essentially connect onto the grid in order to provide more capacity. I mean, where does the issue lie there? Because my understanding is that there's even questions around who ought to foot the bill for the expansion of the grid so that more people can connect. Yeah, so the issues are mainly around the three provinces where we've got the most resources, uh, the wind and the solar, 
which is the Western Cape, the Eastern Cape, and the Northern Cape, where the grid is, uh, is basically constrained. However, we know that uh, there are other companies that were allocated grid by ESCOM, and their projects are not yet ready. So one of the things that was uh, discussed is um, uh, the fact that the grid needs to be made available on a first ready, uh, uh, you know, uh, first served basis, as opposed to the first come, first uh, served basis. So, so those are the issues on that side. And part of uh, solve, resolving that problem has, be, has been discussed as, um, uh, you know, maybe having targeted kind of a procurement program in provinces where we've got the uh, uh, grid access, even though those provinces don't have the most resources. And, and, and that's because even though provinces like Limpopo, Pumalanga, and others that have got uh, grid um, uh, capacity don't, don't, don't necessarily have compared to, to the other three provinces that I mentioned in terms of the resources, when you look at the solar resources, it's still more than 30 times uh, the, the, the amount of solar resources that, we, that, that they have in Europe, and, and they still, they, their projects still make financial sense. So, so in that case, if we look at a, a, pro, a pro targeted kind of procurement that targets those provinces, uh, we might be able to unlock the grid. Um, there are other ways also of unlocking the grid and expanding the grid uh, that the minister is working on. Uh, he will be making announcements uh, somewhere be before the end of, uh, of, of, um, of October. Um, so, so those are the, the, the challenges around the grid. And then the cost estimate letters uh, on the side of ESCOM, they take about uh, three to four months uh, for them to, to basically issue the, the cost estimate letters for, 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 for the for the for the grid connection. And, and that has been one of the things that has been flagged. And uh, ESCOM was also in the in the in the in the in the crowd. They also uh, made some contributions, uh, you know, to, to looking at how they can also be of assistance when it comes to fast tracking renewable energy uh, connection in, in, in the country. In terms of the build the, the new build program for the for the grid expansion. Um, you know, the, the minister is working on that, is uh, planning to bring in the private sector to, to assist in terms of the, the financing of, of this. Uh, there are instances where IPPs themselves have, have made a, a request from government to say, can we then build our own uh, grid uh, so that we don't get delayed? And, and government has allowed them to, to do so. The biggest challenge, however, that I need to flag is the fact that we have um, they have to then negotiate what we call servitudes with farmers and, and, and communities where these grid, with these lines are, are going to be built. And those negotiations take quite a long time. So that's another uh, challenge that we have, apart from the fact that we need close to 400 billion rand to, to, to deal with the grid issues. And sure. we, they, it was, there was also an indication that that 400 billion rand does not necessarily have to come now. It can, it can come in trenches. <laughs> we always knew these things were complex, but my goodness, it seems they're way more layered than we initially thought. Another consideration I imagine that needs to be made is around the sustainability of ESCOM as a going concern. If the energy mix does evolve and leans more into renewable energy than it does into our coal supply, one has to wonder where this leaves ESCOM, especially where you consider that things like the just energy transition needs to consider employment prospects. Um, which, of course, are a big factor for a company like ESCOM, which relies so much on coal and employs so many people. Yeah, so so ESCOM has got a plan to participate in the in the renewable energy program as well. Uh, so so they are also going planning to build uh, and and operate renewable energy uh, 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 power stations um, in the in the near future. Uh, they are also looking at uh, participating at, at manufacturing level as well. So, so ESCOM has, has, has taken stock of, of, um, what, of, of what's, what is coming uh, and, and they, are, they are realigning uh, themselves to respond to what is coming so that they don't basically lose out in terms of the, the opportunities that come with renewable energy. And, and this plan was, was, was drafted long time ago. Uh, ESCOM is just revisiting and revising this plan in line with uh, the, the, the latest uh, uh, developments. The, the, the unbundling of ESCOM uh, is at an advanced stage. We now have um, 
the national trans the, 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 the transmission the national transmission uh, company of South Africa they were also present in the in the discussions yesterday uh, where they they also offered their support in terms of uh, assisting government in the rollout of renewable energy uh, they will be uh, responsible for the for the single buyer office uh, and in terms of the procurement of renewable energy and other uh, um, uh, uh, energy sources going forward and and they will be the ones who will be basically opening up the market so as much as uh, uh, escom uh, will be uh, the, the monopoly will be basically broken down uh, uh, ESCOM will still be very much in charge, especially on the transmission side of things, and, and they will also be providing um, the, what we call base load electricity uh, using uh, some of the coal-fired power stations that will that will give us longevity that will still that will not be be decommissioned, but that will be retrofitted with the emission abatement te technologies uh, going forward, so that we don't have emissions coming from those power stations. So ESCOM is still very much. Uh, part of the of, of the entire plan going forward. Right, Professor Samson Mampueli, thanks very much indeed for helping us understand these issues as always. Appreciate your time and your insights. Professor Mampueli is with the South African National Energy Development Institute. Once again, thanks very much indeed.